He's our example. Chapter 13. Jesus, a man. We praise and honor you, Father God. We thank you that every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you grant us a spirit of wisdom and a revelation of knowledge of the Lord Jesus today and that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened and we'll know the hope of your calling and we'll know the honor that you've put upon us and the exceeding greatness of your power to us that we'll believe and for that we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's been coming up in my spirit for several weeks now, several months actually, about Jesus, a man. Jesus, a man. In the past few weeks or months, I knew God wanted me to talk about this subject and I just believe he want us to do it today. I think most of us absolutely shudder to think that Jesus was like us. Most of us will acknowledge that he was in the flesh, but we think it was supernatural flesh. Most of us think that he was unapproachable, that you couldn't touch him. But if you read the Bible, you will clearly see that the Bible presents a different picture of the Lord Jesus than they presented in the church that I grew up in anyway. So for the past few weeks, I've just been working on some scriptures that God has been giving me and leading me toward. And I was praying yesterday and got what I was supposed to get to talk to you about it today. Well, I was praying, I guess, for a couple of hours or so in the spirit and in English. I pray that way. I pray a few sentences in English and then a few in tongues. I've learned to do that. God led me to do that and leads me to do that. I don't think I knew to do that on my own. God led me to do that. I was, anyway, just praying and quoting scripture. I don't pray my prayers. I think I try to pray God's prayers. So I'll just pray quoting scriptures, then uh, pray in tongues, as I say, just alternating back and forth. That may help some of you right there. I've told you that before, but some of you undoubtedly need to hear it today. And after about a couple of hours or so, I could tell that I was beginning to worship and praise God, and something was happening. I kept praying and continuing to pray, and there was so much demonic activity against what I was getting ready to share uh, uh, in my spirit, I just felt the, 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 the power of the Lord all over me. You know, Satan despises this kind of teaching also, you know. And I always know when God gives me new revelation or something that's very important to him. I know because Satan will try to upset everybody and mess things up all around me. But I've learned to not let him rule me. I do whatever I know is right. But as I continued to worship God and pray, I started getting up and walking around and worshiping and praising and worshiping and praising. And and, and, and after a while, after about a couple of hours or maybe two and a half hours, the father said to me, my son is the son of God. He is the son of man. And you are a son of man, and you are a son of God. And I said, that is not God saying that. And the father said, it is me. Go read the Bible. It's in there. I mean, I was stunned when God said that. I knew that. I knew every bit of that, but that's tough. You know, I fell in the category where Jesus said, oh, you fool, you slow of heart. And I acknowledge that. But... I'll tell you this, when you get it in my heart, you can call me a fool or whatever you want, but I walk in it. 
once it's in my heart. See, I know so many people, they just grab on to things and as soon as the pressure comes, they're offended and they stumble and they fall. It takes me time. It takes me time to believe it. It stunned me when the Father said, My Son is the Son of God and the Son of Man, and you are a Son of Man and a Son of God. And today, with the help of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we will teach you how you are like Jesus, how he was made flesh, the Word was made flesh like you, just like your flesh, and he dwelt among us in God's plan to reconcile man back to him. God's plan, not our plan. God's plan to send Jesus Christ into the earth and that he would die, be buried, and rise again on the third day. And when he did, he resurrected the entire human race that believe and continue to believe and walk on with him. So having shared that with you, I want to just talk about Jesus, a man. And he's our example. Let me start by saying this to you. Just a few years ago, to have said Jesus was a man would have absolutely been blasphemy to me. I could not comprehend that Jesus was just a man. I knew that Jesus was a carpenter, that I heard that in church, but I had absolutely no revelation of Jesus being a carpenter. I assumed that he had a supernatural hammer, supernatural nails, and supernatural saw that he brought from heaven with him, if he even used them. He probably just looked at the board and said, be there. I mean, I could not believe that Jesus was like you and me. I could not believe that Jesus even picked up a hammer, really. I remember back not long ago, maybe a couple, three, four years ago, I got this antique desk, and it needed to be stripped. I'd never done anything like that before. It needed to be stripped and sanded and, and varnished, and a friend of mine was into that sort of thing and said he would help me to do it. I'd never done anything like that before, so I thought, why not? Well, I got into doing it, and I thought, hey, I could pay my friend a couple of hundred bucks to do this and be done with it because it was taking too long and I really didn't like it that much. You know, I could make a grand or something playing music while I was taking all this time to do this varnishing and sanding of this desk. It was not my thing because it was taking, as I said, too long. And after the novelty wore off of me doing it myself, I personally didn't like doing it. I'd rather be playing music. And the father spoke and said, my son is a carpenter. I said, okay, okay, I'll finish working on it. I really didn't know what he was saying to me. He was saying, my son was a carpenter and you don't believe it. He was a carpenter. He was a person like you. And that's what most of us think. He was not a person like us, see? So beginning with Genesis 3, uh, if you'll turn to Genesis 3, we're going to read 1 through 7. So get there, if you will. We're going to begin, and God is going to set lots of people free to believe him as revelation comes into your heart. It's going to change your mind. I'm talking about your will, not your brain, not your intellect. But when Eve was deceived and Adam willingly ate of the fruit, God appeared and Adam blamed his wife. His wife blamed the devil. You can read it. Well, let's just read it. Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Let me get it here. Oh, boy, the devil don't want you guys to hear this. He's got my nose stopped up. He's got my head clogged up. But you know, we're going to plow right on through this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Genesis 3. I think it is, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, 
you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Boy, there it is right there. Now Eve was deceived. Adam willingly ate. Adam blamed his wife. Eve blamed the devil. It's true, and it's still that way today. The Father says, and I will put enmity, or hostility, or hatred, whichever word you like, I will put enmity, hostility, hostility, or hatred between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. Notice her seed, her seed, her seed. I want to show you that because the father started out immediately saying about Jesus he's going to be a man he is called her seed not the father's but her seed which tells you clearly here that the woman had a part of this let me say this to you somehow I always assumed that supernaturally Jesus was put in the womb of Mary and there was no fertilization ever took place. And I won't get into the uh, act of trying to explain that and all of that, but this clearly tells me that, well, we won't get into the physiology of all of that, but this clearly tells me that Jesus was her seed. i tell you this, I have to. I read about where they put BBs. Now listen, they put BBs in the womb of sheep and they acted like they were pregnant. Now that blew me away. It did, listen. And when I started reading this, I said, well, there's nothing to that. I mean, if you can put a BB in a sheep's uterus and she acts like she's pregnant, well, then there's no problem for God to put Jesus in a uterus without conception. But the Bible says she conceived. She conceived. She was involved in the conception. The fertilization took place between the Holy Spirit and Mary. That's as far as I want to go, uh, Jesus, unless you want me to go further. This is absolutely mind-boggling to me because I have it all figured out, see, how fertilization takes place, except God said, I know more about fertilization than you do because I'm the one that does the fertilizing. And so if that will help some of your little medical brains, notice I said little because I know you've gotten rid of all your pride. Her seed, I wanted to show you that. Just wanted to show you that. Go to Zechariah 6, if you will. Zechariah 6. We're going to take just take some Old Testament prophecies beginning in Genesis, of course. Actually, this is a fun revelation. Zechariah 6, 12. Then said to him, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, a man whose name is Branch, Notice this is the Father talking, the Lord of hosts. Notice a man whose name is Branch, a man that was prophesied. Then look, if you will, let's just look at Isaiah 11. We'll get fired up here in a minute. There is so much power in me right now, fighting the resistance. I can hardly speak. It's like I'm trying to push a car uphill with a rope, see? 
For those of you that have learned that that ever get faith enough to walk in the spirit and minister in the spirit and pull down strongholds, you'll find out what I'm talking about. I mean, it is absolutely almost impossible sometimes to talk because the power of God is so strong and the resistance against what God is trying to say is so great. But God is greater than the resistance and I thank him. Isaiah 11, 1. Then, Then a shoot, a rod will spring from the stem of Jesse and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. Then a shoot, a rod will spring from the stem of Jesse and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. Now this is clearly talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks about, listen, it talks about out of the stem of Jesse. Who was that? David. Jesse was David's father. And we will see as we go through scripture today, they referred to commonly in the New Testament to Jesus as the son of David. The son of David. Jesse was the father of David. The prophetic utterance given here by Isaiah the prophet some 750 years prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ said that there would come a shoot or a rod out of the stem of Jesse. That shoot or rod being authority, that authority came through David and Jesus is that rod or shoot. He's called the branch shall grow up out of his roots. Then in Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself, listen, the Lord, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child or conceive and bear a son. A virgin shall have a son. He's called her son. That makes him the son of man, the son of man, and he is the son of God, and he is the son of man. Why? Because he had a natural mother, and she was involved in the conception, and he was her seed as well as the father's, and that made him the son of man and the son of God. So he was a man. If he was the son of man, he took upon himself flesh and blood, just like you and I. Now, she shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. I think now, let's go to the New Testament. Matthew 1, 18 through 25. 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed, to Joseph before they came together. She was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, and Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man. Listen, and Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David. Notice, Joseph, son of David. Jesus was called son of David. Notice, Joseph is called here son of David. Now, we will tie these things together as we go, and God will be ministered to your heart so that you will have revelation of what we're doing here. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, and she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Verse 22, now all this took place that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, and then we're quoting Isaiah seven fourteen again, behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bear a son. A virgin shall bear a son. It's her son as well as it is the Father in heaven son. He is the Son of God through his heavenly Father. He is the Son of Man through his earthly mother. And don't ever forget that. 
They shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us, means God with us. Verse 24, and Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took her as his wife. Now look at verse 25, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Her firstborn son, her firstborn son. Here the Holy Spirit calls Jesus her firstborn son, son of man, son of God. He was and is both. You and I are likewise both. So if we just want to take a little time to check some things out, we might look at Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. These are some interesting exercises. They are not things I would normally do, but they're important to people that don't believe, especially people that try to use their brains. These brains, they'll get you in trouble, you know. Verse 1, Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Here's where Jesus is the son of man. He's the son of David, the son of Abraham. Now, if you'd like to look at Luke 3, Luke being a physician, and there's absolutely no record in scripture where he ever practiced a day of medicine. It's commonly said in America where he did. Listen, but you cannot find it anywhere in the Bible where Luke ever gave an aspirin. Amen. And you see, it's adding to the Bible and taking away from the Bible when you say otherwise. Luke 3.38 genealogy traces him back to the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Son of Adam. How many of you know that Adam was not a son of man? He was the son of God. Adam was the only son of God besides who? Jesus. All the rest of us are the sons of men and then sons of God. And Adam was a son of God, just like Jesus. Jesus is known in scripture as the last Adam. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 45. They're the two sons of God. So if we can take that, we can see how the Holy Spirit wrote through men how Jesus was and is the Son of God and the Son of Man. And if he was the Son of Man, he was a man. Amen. Let's don't forget that. Let's get revelation. Let's believe. Let's say, Jesus, give me understanding. Jesus, grant me understanding that you were a man. See, because I've heard preachers in America, what a big man uh, he was. What a great man he was. First, let me say he is a great man. He is a wonderful man. He is a great man, not just because he's alive, but I've heard some say what a big man he was, just like I just said. In the scriptures, it says, isn't this Mary's son? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Joseph's son? You know what? Uh, it's nothing but puffed up pride is all it is. Just puffed up pride in some preacher's hearts. And what they're doing is preaching their pride of their own heart because they think they're big men and they're not. They wouldn't want to not have Jesus bigger than them. You know what I'm saying? Although I have found preachers in America that say they tell the devil to not manifest in their presence, and he won't. Have you ever heard preachers do that? But I never could find in Scripture where Jesus told a demon you can't manifest. They always manifested. And some preachers say, I tell them no manifestation, and there's no manifestation. Well, I say Jesus didn't do that. So you have surpassed my big brother, Jesus. You know what spirit that is, pride and stupid. It's amazing to me. I've heard it on TV a lot. When you think you can do it better than Jesus, my friend, you are really deceived. You have missed the boat. See, you have totally missed it. Jesus is our example. How many of you don't know that? 
Come on, don't kid me. Most of us didn't know Jesus was and is our example. I surely didn't for a long time. I was talking to a friend of mine, a pastor, and he said, Rick, I've got to come to live up to what my father was before I am ever going to be able to do the work on trying to live like Jesus. That's sad, isn't it? I said, forget your father, bypass your father, go to the top. Well, he's still living in his make-believe word or world or whatever. I pray for him every day. That's all we can do for people. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. After being baptized, Jesus went up immediately out of the water and behold, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Father gave witness that Jesus was his Son and he was well pleased and the people around there heard him speaking. Romans 1, let's go there. Let's see how the Apostle Paul talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. What we'll deal with the rest of the hour is how Jesus dealt with himself, how the people that worked with him, how they viewed him, and how the Apostle Paul viewed him, and how Satan viewed him, because it's all right here, clearly in the scriptures. The Apostle Paul said that he was a man born out of time, and that he did not spend time with the Lord Jesus as the rest of the apostles, but Jesus came and visited him after his resurrection. Romans 1, 3, and 4, Paul writing to the Romans, he says, Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh. Descendant of David according to the flesh. What does that tell you? He was a man made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Look at verse 4. Who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of Holiness, our Lord Jesus Christ? Here Paul deals with Jesus as the Son of Man and the Son of God. In the seed of David, he was Son of Man in the flesh. Look what happens in declared to be and declared to be the son of God with power. The word is deutimus, when, when, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. That's what made Jesus different from any, any of the rest of the prophets. He was the son of God. He was raised from the dead and declared to be both son of God and son of man. When he was raised from the dead and when he was raised from the dead. When? When he was raised from the dead. He did what? He raised us with him. I want to go over that again. He raised us with him. In the flesh, he was known as the seed of David, but he was resurrected and declared to be the son of God with power through the resurrection. Listen, so he walked as a man, he died, he was buried, he descended into hell, and after that, he was raised from the dead, and that declared him to be the Son of God. He's the only one that's ever been resurrected. 